Hey, I'm Greg Honeycutt, the Family Consumer Science Agent in Harnett County. And I'm Jackie Helton, the 4-H Agent in Harnett County. And boy, I really enjoyed that trip to uh, uh, see the fish uh, farm there in uh, Cumberland County. And could you even believe they got an underwater camera and we got to swim with the fishes? I couldn't believe it. I've never seen that. So, so since we, you know, we know we're doing fish, can you tell us what our recipes are going to be for the day, Greg? Yeah, so um, there's many different ways you can prepare fish, um, but what I thought we'd do is we'd maybe try something that people um, eat maybe on a weekly or a couple weekly basis um, at home and make a whole different spin on it. So, uh, Mr. Jackie, at your house, do y'all make tacos every once in a while? Ah, you know, one of my favorite days is Taco Tuesdays, right? Taco Tuesdays. So, um, when we make tacos at home like that, we typically use um, ground beef or some kind of ground meat, or maybe even if you do vegetarian, you use a bean. Um, but it's a very, um, almost like a chili base and savory style. Um, and then it normally has cheese and lettuce and a little bit of uh, tomatoes and things like that. Um, and you might use a hard or a soft shell. Mm -hmm. Well, what we're gonna try is we're gonna do something that's a little bit closer to like a street taco. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make fish tacos today. And we're gonna make them two different ways. Oh, two different ways. I didn't know you could make tacos two different ways. Fish tacos. Yeah, I know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to blacken the fish. So if you want to, uh, to get a nice sear and a nice blacken and get a lot of those really spicy flavors. Um, and we're also gonna show you a way to bread the fish and to uh, and to put that in there, and so it'll have more of like a crunchy uh, texture. So um, two different textures, um, same fish, and so we'll see how it turns out. Awesome. Yeah, I'm waiting to learn about blacking so we can explain to everybody what that process is. Exactly. So um, so first thing that I figured we'd do is we'd talk about what all we're gonna do today and what all is gonna go into these tacos and what we need to get prepared. Um, so one thing we're gonna do is um, with any taco, um, we wanna have a nice juicy sauce. So we want something that's gonna give it a lot of flavor and a lot of, uh, a real good pop. And so a lot of times you'll actually, um, you might marinate your meat in this sauce or you might add it on extra. For this one, for these purposes, we're gonna add it on at the end. And so it's gonna give a nice little drizzle, great presentation, um, and also it's going to, uh, to really bring up that flavor in the fish. So um, fish is one of those things, especially um, the what we're gonna be using today, which is tilapia. Um, mm -hmm. It's not got a lot of strong flavors in it. It's not a very strong flavored fish. And so we're gonna put a lot of flavors in there to really bring bring out that uh, that flavor. You know, when I cook tacos at home, you know, like if I'm doing the beef tacos or chicken tacos, I normally have some sort of salad on there. So lettuce, tomatoes, things like that. Uh, what, what can we do to do for our fish tacos that might be similar? Exactly. So that's a, that's a great thing. And so with any taco, you need some form of filler. So you need a little bit of filler. And that's where we're going to make our, uh, our slaw today. So we're going to make a, a good citrusy kind of slaw that's going to go on this taco um, and really uh, set it off. So this is going to be a, a great little uh, addition. So we've got our fish we're going to make. We're going to make it two different ways. We're going to do two techniques that we're going to show you, blackened as well as breaded. Um, and then we're going to do a uh, sauce. And then we're also going to have our base, which is going to be our slaw. Um, so what do you say? What we think we should get started? I think so. So, you know, think about this. When you, when you eat fish, I don't know about you, but I, I want my fish as hot as it can be. Exactly. So thinking about the order of what we're going to do things, would that be what we would do last, for instance? Yeah, so, um, so there's two reasons I think we'll, we'll wait and do the fish last. And so we've talked a little bit about cross-contamination. Um, and cross-contamination is, uh, is a, a big player, and, and we don't want to potentially contaminate our slaw or potentially contaminate uh, our, uh, our sauce with raw fish. And so that's one reason I like to go ahead and get that ready and get it set aside. Um, and if you're going to make this, you can potentially make these things ahead of time, even a day before, um, and pull them out the day of the, uh, that you're getting ready to put your tacos together. Um, but what we'll do is we're going to prepare those first. Um, set those aside and then we'll start handling our fish and also like you said um, cold fish is not very tasty so we're going to make sure we get a nice warm piece of fish to throw on our taco right there at the end sounds great all right so let, which one are we going to do first uh, we got a sauce and we got um, our um, filler that's going to be the coleslaw what do you think we should start yeah, so I think I'm gonna start and go ahead and get my slaw ready, um, and or go ahead and get my sauce ready, um, and and I'll I'll prepare that one, and then I'm gonna have you uh, do the slaw. All Sounds right. Sounds good. So for this particular recipe, one thing that we're gonna do is um, we're gonna go a little bit off um, uh, off memory of how we're gonna put this together, and this is one of those recipes that you can really kind of tweak and and make make your own really. And so um, what I wanna make sure that we do is uh, we're gonna give you a recipe and give you the recipe that we're gonna use, um, but today we're gonna do it a little bit off of memory. So these are this is some recipes that uh, we've made a bunch of times and so we're gonna do it off of that um, and see how it turns out. So with salsas, as, as well as we talked about with salads and things like this, um, 
not like baking. And so we can actually, uh, we can adjust these things and we would always taste test um, as we go. Um, and so we can, we can tweak these things if we needed to. You know what's great about this process? Uh, when, if they get into bottom before it's a uh, cooking competition, one of the things they will not have recipes in front of them. So being able to use some of the experiences like we have from the past to be able to do this, this would be a good skill for them. Exactly, and I always think it's a good skill to learn, to learn how to, uh, to cook without a recipe. So um, we're gonna do that today. All right, so let's get started with that sauce. So um, for the sauce, I'm gonna make, um, uh, make my sauce in here. And for this sauce, the base things I'm gonna have, I'm only gonna have a couple ingredients, um, and this just gives you a, a, a basic kind of uh, sauce. And a lot of your sauces um, will have uh, some kind of base or some kind of, it's either gonna be a creamy base sauce or it's gonna be a fruity style sauce or something like that. For our base today, I'm gonna use a combination of sour cream mixed with a little bit of light mayo um, and so that's gonna be my base um, and then I'm gonna add in a little bit of citrus with my lime juice because lime juice goes great with fish and it's a great fresh taste and so um, it's really gonna uh, work really well in this dish and then I'm gonna throw in a little bit of salt and pepper um, and then I'm gonna finish it off with some hot sauce so hot sauce is one of those things hot sauce and um, and, and sour cream or hot sauce and, and mayo make a really creamy kind of um, a little pop to the sauce so it makes a really good sauce for this and it'll be a really great flavoring for this uh, fish that doesn't typically have a lot of flavor so I'm gonna go ahead and get this ready um, and like I said before I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna start a little or start with my light mayo and how much you decide to make on this is very dependent on how much you're preparing so um, today we're only gonna prepare four pieces of fish so we'd only have um, a couple of tacos potentially um, so I don't need to make a huge amount of sauce so I'm just gonna make a, a decent amount enough to go into four tacos or maybe five tacos um, uh, but if you were making this for, for 10 15 people you might make up more sauce but one good thing is, is if you're making this sauce um, you could always um, save it for about a week in the fridge. That, that's what I was about to fix and ask you because you wouldn't want to make up enough for 50 people and try to save it because it wouldn't last that long, correct? Exactly, so I'm gonna put in here, I'm gonna put maybe um, a little less than maybe half a cup and that's what I'm gonna go with here. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and switch over and go to my light sour cream. Um, and sour cream is, uh, is one of my favorite um, additions to tacos. So sour mm -hmm. cream goes really great with tacos and goes great with those spicy flavors. So I'm gonna add in about, I don't know, a little more than a fourth of a cup. So I've got about um, about two parts, one part, somewhere in there is what I'm looking for. A um, little bit more mayo. And then now I'm gonna add in my spices and my citrus. So for this, um, this amount, I'm probably only gonna add about um, maybe two teaspoons of citrus. And then I'm gonna add in some hot sauce. Now the hot sauce, this is one that's very dependent on how much you like. Um, I always say, put a little bit in there um, and you could taste test it and then add a little more if you needed to. Um, since I'm not going to taste test it right now, I'm just going to go based off the color because this is a sauce that I've made quite a few times. And so I'm going to go based off color um, to tell me if, I, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm pretty close. So I'm going to add a little bit, maybe a tablespoon or maybe a half a tablespoon. And I'm just going to mix this up. And, and as I get to mixing this up, you'll see it starts to kind of take some of that, that nice rich red flavor and make a really creamy looking sauce. And um, I know you can't smell it, but hopefully you're making this at home and it's starting to really smell really good. You know, I like the fact that you're using a glass bowl, thinking about presentation for if you were setting this on the table to look nice. Because yep. presentation is a very important part of what, what we're doing, especially for its competitions. Yep, so, uh, so that's a pretty good uh, color. I'm gonna add a little bit more hot sauce not much, and then maybe another teaspoon um, just to get me a little bit richer flavor to go with this fish. And I'm gonna go ahead and add in some salt and pepper. And this, I don't really, I wouldn't measure out the salt and pepper. I'm just gonna go a little dash, and then on my salt, um, maybe about a, um, a little heavier dash than uh, on my pepper. And I'm gonna mix this in, and this is now gonna get me a really good color. And this is the color that I'm really looking for. Um, it's kind of that, that orangey, slightly red color um, and it's smelling really really good so I'm gonna I'm happy with this right now and so if I was gonna wait to eat you know let's say a couple hours later I'd go ahead and just cover this put it in the refrigerator and I could pull it out later but for right now um, we're gonna cook on through and we're gonna be ready to eat in the next 20 minutes or so so 
I'm Sounds gonna go ahead and set it away. If you're gonna taste test that, would you use the spoon that you just mixed it with and put it back in there? Yeah, so if I was gonna taste test this, what I would do um, if I was cooking for others is I would um, I would have a disposable spoon, one time use, taste test it, and then throw it away. Um, or you could always use um, a spoon, wash it, and then you know use it again. Um, but for today, um, I'm not gonna uh, taste test it um, today, uh, but if you were at home by yourself and you were the only one making it, you're just making it for yourself, you can, you're welcome to taste test. But we don't want to transfer our germs to someone else um, if they're going to uh, be eating with us as well. Got you. Food safety is one of those things we're always trying to make sure that we pass on that good information. Yep. All right. So it looks like my sauce is ready. What do you say we get that slaw going? Sounds good. I'm excited. I've, I've actually uh, used this same slaw, slaw mix right here when I'm making my homemade egg rolls. So I've never made my, a homemade slaw with it, believe it or not. So, uh, so I'm assuming we use this whole bag right here? Yeah, let's just go ahead and use that whole bag. Um, and with this slaw mix versus, um, you can always make slaw by your, or, or from scratch. Um, this just makes it a little bit easier. And we always think about when we're cooking, the, the more steps that we can make a little easier, the better. Mm -hmm. And so um, with this, it's already chopped up. It's ready to go. Um, and it's got a little bit of carrots. It's got a little bit of red um, cabbage. It's got mm -hmm. a little white cabbage in there. So it's going to go great. Going to make a really pretty presentation. I don't know if you can smell it. But it just smells amazing already opening it up. But that, that, that red cabbage especially. Exactly. All right. So what else we're going to put in there, Mr. Jackie? Well, Leslie, I know we're going to use some lime juice. Uh, what, what do you think about it? Uh, Maybe a couple tablespoons because I've got a pretty good bowl. Maybe yeah, I'd more. say so. And, and this is another uh, instance where you can put a couple tablespoons in there and then um, you can always add a little bit more if you need to. So if you, if you okay. find that it looks a little too dry. One, two. Right, perfect. And you see Mr. Jackie's measures stuff out enough and he's, uh, he's done this by eyeball that he can get pretty close. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Yes, and sometimes too, you know, when I was first learning, sometimes I might actually use the cap. Uh, you know, because it, it's something, instead of having to clean up something, I could use the cap to get a rough estimate of, of what exactly. I'm going to do. And so, eventually you may know, three caps is exactly what you need. Perfect. Yep. And then, uh, last thing is, uh, last couple things we want to do. So now we've kind of got a citrusy, we've got a base, and if you didn't have lime juice, you could also use any kind of vinegar. So you could use a white vinegar, an apple cider vinegar. Um, these would go good to make this type of um, light, fresh tasting um, type of slaw. You know, we actually uh, have some leftover cilantro from a dish we did the other day. Um, what do you think about putting some of it in? That sounds great. Yeah, okay. so cilantro uh, always goes great with, um, with tacos. And it's one of those things that's going to give it a little bit of fresh taste, nice fresh herbs. Um, and then the last thing I figure we'll do is, as you'll notice with a lot of our cooking, we finished off with a little salt and pepper. So uh, I'm going to have Mr. Jackie throw in a little bit of salt and pepper in a minute. And based on the bowl here is how he's going to gauge how much he's going to use. So when you see I'm using a much smaller dose here, I'm just going to use uh, just a little bit. He might have a little bit more sprinkles of his salt and pepper. Okay. Now, I, I really am a, a big pepper fan, so I have to be careful so I don't put too much in there for other folks. But I like pepper, and it's not coming out a whole lot there, so I'm going to check the opening. There we go. And then just hit it with a couple. I know the salt comes out really fast. And one thing you'll notice, too, with salt and pepper, and like Mr. Jackie said, when he was getting ready to salt and pepper, he's thinking of his guests, or he's thinking who he's going to be eating with. Because he always knows at the end of it, he can throw in a little bit more pepper for himself, or he could throw in a little more hot sauce. So we always want to make things um, thinking about who we're going to prepare them for. It's not yeah. just how we like to eat it. Yeah, I, I learned that, too, because my dad, he can't have as much salt. So uh, what, what, normally if I'm cooking, when they come over, I have to use less salt, uh, or, or, or maybe no salt, for certain things that he's eating. All right, so how do you think it's mixing up? Do you think it's about right? Well, I was going to ask you, do you think it needs a little bit more lime juice? Or I, I'm trying to think, you know, to me this would be like if I was going to put lettuce in my taco, sort of mm -hmm. got that same look to it, and we've added it in there, but I didn't know if I needed it wet or not. Yeah, I think it looks just about right. So um, so this is one of those things, too, you kind of, you can kind of play with it, but um, but I actually enjoy, if I if I suck it too much, I lose some of that texture and that crispness, mm -hmm. crispness of the uh, the cabbage. And so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go a little light on this and I'll show you what we can do if we wanna add a little bit more moisture at the end. Perfect, I so. just wanna double check since this is the first time I've done it. All right, so we're gonna uh, set that slaw aside. We've got our slaw, we've got our sauce that we're gonna use now. I guess we gotta get some fish, right? Oh yeah, time to get that fish. Hold on, do we have to catch these fish? No, we don't have to catch these fish. Luckily, we've already got these fish ready and they're already prepared, filleted, and ready to use. So um, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do blackened and we're gonna do um, a breaded fish. 
Um, because the breaded fish tends to make quite a bit of mess of our station, um, I say we do the blackened first, set it aside, and then we're going to do um, do the other. And so, um, what do you think about if I get it prepped and you cook it? I think that's great. But now I've not cooked uh, the tilapia before, so I might need your help to make sure I don't overcook it. That sounds great because one of the biggest things you want to think about when you're cooking fish is um, fish is really delicate. And the best fish is going to be one that's nice and flaky. So it's going to um, you want to cook it just to the right temperature, but not overcook it too much. One thing that's um, that's good about a dish like this is that we're going to have a lot of other things playing in, a lot of other factors. But if you were just cooking this fish by itself, and it was just going to be the the highlight of the dish, and maybe you're going to do it with a uh, a bed of rice or something like that, um, you would want to make sure you cooked it just right because an overcooked fish is never going to be um, super tasty. And so um, it's, it's it's something that you got to play with. And the first piece you cook. It's probably not going to be perfect, um, but as you get better and better at it and you cook fish more, you'll get better uh, and, and you'll be able to get that perfect flakiness of the fish. So is there a specific temperature we need to get the fish to? You know, I know like with steaks and, and pork, pork uh, on the grill, 145 is the minimum safe temperature. So what would it, might, would it be for fish? Yep, so it's the same thing. So it's 145 for our fish. And so we're going to try to get to that same temperature. And, uh, and like we've talked about um, in the past with other uh, meats, um, a lot of times when we take it off, it's going to continue that cooking temperature. So um, if we get it right up close to that 145, it'll actually continue to rise a little bit on the plate. And so, um, so we want to get it somewhere around that, that range. Awesome. All right. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, and uh, I'm going to pull, pull out my tilapia and then I'm going to get it, uh, get the blackening seasoning on there and we'll get it ready. So what do you say about getting that pan started? All right. So now for blackening, does my pan uh, need to be on a low setting or a high setting? Yeah, so what makes it blackening is that you get a really nice char and a really nice um, setting of those seasonings. And so for this one, you want to go quite high heat. So we want to go medium high, uh, medium high to even maybe even high, just depending on the unit as to how long um, or how high we would go. Um, but you want to see it where it's almost ready to start to kind of smoke. It would be that kind of heat. So Okay, uh, I want to go ahead and cut it on as high as I can, and then I can back it off once I think the temperature gets up there. Exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my tilapia and get ready to start. So I'm going to make sure I have plenty of room and I've separated everything else out, and I'm going to get ready with my tilapia. All right. So. Alright, now that I got my tilapia, and you'll notice I'm going to prepare it on this uh, cutting board. This way I don't make a huge mess of my, uh, my area, and then when I'm done, um, I can take the raw uh, fish uh, juice, throw it back into, my, um, into the sink, and don't have to worry about contaminating my area completely. Sounds good, and I, I see you're using a disposable plate too, so that helps. Yeah, so, um, so you can definitely use these disposable plates, and, um, and that way it makes your cleanup a little bit easier. So, Because um, there's nothing worse than um, they getting finished and then having tons of dishes at the end after you eat. All right, so um, for this particular uh, blackening, um, if you didn't have um, a seasoning that's, uh, what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a pre-made blackened seasoning. And this particular seasoning um, has a base of garlic, it's got some paprika, it's got some chili powder, um, it's got some onion powder, all those types of things. So if you didn't have this, you can pretty much make um, these things uh, with those base ingredients. So if you put a little bit of those um, different things, mix it up, maybe a little salt and pepper, mix it up, you can make your own kind of blackened seasoning. Um, uh, if, you, if you don't have one at home. So that's something that you can do ahead of time. But we're just gonna do this for these purposes, make it a little bit easy, um, and we'll, uh, we'll let you know what kind of blackened season we, look, uh, we used. Okay, All right? Sounds good. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is for my blackened seasoning, what I want is I want a nice coverage on the entire fish. Um, and this is one of the things that if you've not used this, your particular um, uh, seasoning before, you don't know how fast or how slow it's gonna come out. So you definitely don't want to um, to start to pour it on there and you get big clumps or big hunks of areas because um, you, you'll get bites that are very, very spicy and very strong this season. And then you might get other bites that don't have anything. Um, so what I like to do is I'm gonna get my fish out here um, ready to, uh, to season. And then I'm gonna actually pour the seasoning into my hand and I'm gonna show you a technique to make sure I get it evenly dispersed across the entire fish, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and we've got four pieces of fish here. Let's say we do half blackened and half uh, breaded. What do you think? That's perfect. All right, so I'm gonna pull these out and, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and I always, when I'm working um, with a meat, I like to always think of 
one hand is my, my dirty hand and one hand is my clean hand. So now I know that this hand is going to be, um, has touched the fish juice. So I don't want to touch anything else with this particular hand. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this hand to pull out any of my seasonings or any of these things. And so, um, so as long as I don't touch, um, as long as I don't uh, transfer, then I'm fine. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of my seasoning out here on my cutting board, and I'm gonna use this, and I'll go ahead and get both of my pieces so I'm ready to go. Um, and I'm gonna pick up with my, my clean hand, and, I'm, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up, you know, maybe six to 12 inches, and I'm gonna use circular motions, and I'm just lightly letting this fall out of my hand. And what, I'm do what this is doing is you'll see that I'm getting, um, I'm getting even uh, coverage over my piece of tilapia. So I'm not getting too, see if I'm too close and I'm holding down, I'm gonna get little pockets where I'll get um, really heavy seasoning. And so I don't wanna do too much of that. And so I'll come back here and I wanna get a nice amount of seasoning here because I want something that's gonna really help it to blacken up and to really uh, get that nice char on it. Yeah, I think this is a different technique than when we, we do uh, a rub on a steak or a pork chop, for instance. You know, there you actually would work it in with your hands and, and really get a thick covering on it. But yep. with this, it's, it's a different technique and I yep. like that. And you can, you can always come in and you can lightly tap to help it set into the fish if you want to. Um, but it's not something that you have to do. But always remember your, your, your hands, your clean hand versus your dirty hand. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead. And this is a, a, a part that you can actually blacken the other side in the pan if you want to. But I'm just going to go ahead and have it ready for Mr. Jackie so he doesn't have to worry about it. And I'm going to flip over here and I'll go ahead and just season the other side. So I'm going to do the same technique. Same kind of thing. Mr. Greg, one thing that's I, I noticed is, you know, when you talk about what a serving uh, of meat should be, you talk about, about the uh, size of the palm of your hand. And I noticed that's almost what we have cut here. Yep, exactly. So these, um, these particular uh, pieces are roughly probably about that, that uh, perfect serving size, one piece per person. Mm -hmm. um, so the way I think about it when I'm doing tacos, if I'm doing tacos, um, I would probably make two tacos per person would be mm -hmm. about a perfect serving. Um, and so what I would do is I would um, half this fish um, when I'm getting ready to put it into my taco, use one half on one taco, one half on the other. So that way they get to try both flavors. Exactly. All right. So about ready here. All right. I can tell my pan I'm getting some smoke on here. So I'm going to back the temperature down a little bit now. All right. So uh, once we, uh, so now that we're ready and our fish is ready to go in, um, now for this particular, um, this particular cooking method, um, we don't want to put too much oil. So you want just enough to kind of, um, just to kind of lightly cover um, the pan, just enough to, to have something in the bottom of it so we don't have a ton of stickage. But this is not one like when we're going to transition into the breaded fish, we're going to have a, 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 a uniform layer of the oil below it and it's going to actually cook in that oil. This one we just want it just enough. Okay, so I just need, I want to put just a little bit of oil, almost like we did uh, with a different dish. I'm going to pull it off there just a little bit, and I'm going to put a little bit of oil, and I'm going to rotate it around a pan. And that's just a nice little coating on our pan. And if you have a, uh, depending on your pan, um, you might not even need to put any uh, oil in it if you have a fresh, new, non-stick pan. Um, but mm -hmm. this always just kind of protects you a little bit. So, you think we're ready to go? I, I think we're ready. The pan's definitely hot. All right, so what I'm going to do is Let's I'm going to I'm gonna transfer these in, in since I've got a dirty hand, just so it makes it a little bit easier for Mr. Jackie. So I'm going to transfer these in. If you have uh, utensils, you would actually want to use uh, two different utensils to uh, to put one to put in and one to cook with. So I'm going to put in here. Oh. All right. We got some good sizzle there. I'm going to just move my oil around a little bit. All right, so that looks great. That looks like it's doing good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rinse up my hands real quick and uh, and get ready to prepare my other uh, my breaded fish. So when these are done, Mr. Jack can be ready to put those into. Yeah, I've got a couple of options for turning the fish. Uh, I have a traditional spatula, which uh, most people have in their house, but I also have some tongs. These are actually rated for heat, so these can go up to 400 degrees in a pan. We know our pan's not going to get that hot. So I have two ways that I can actually turn the fish. Uh, you know, if we were doing smaller nuggets and maybe we we're frying, these tongs may be more handy uh, for turning that fish later. So I'm assuming with fish, um, we don't want to turn it a hundred times, right? Because it's a flaky thing and it might fall apart on me. Yeah, so fish is very delicate. So um, like with most of our meats, we want to just try to get one uh, flip. 
And with blackening, it's, it will let you know when it's ready. So when it's ready to flip, um, it will it will naturally just release from the pan. So like if you try to check it now, um, you'll see that it doesn't move much. Yeah. You're not getting much movement. And so that's because it's not set that blackening in there yet. So it will get a nice crispy blackened seasoning on that side. And that's when you know it's ready to flip. Awesome. Yeah, I learned, like I say, this is a different way than I normally cook my fish, so. All right, so while he's uh, getting ready for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get our other fish ready. Um, and the way that I'm gonna do that is we're gonna do the breading. All right, so this breading, I'm gonna have three parts. So I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna have a floured um, portion and mm -hmm. I'm gonna flour the fish. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna put it into an egg wash. And so what this egg wash does is this actually helps you to, um, to keep that coating on there. And then I'm gonna finish it off with a nice panko breadcrumb. Oh. So the panko breadcrumb gives you a really nice crispy out exterior. Um, you can do just one, uh, you can just dredge and then put the panko, but I find doing a little bit of flour ahead of time just makes it that much better. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my eggs ready. All right. So like Mr. Jackie shows you, I'm gonna use the technique um, of one easy, uh, uh, one easy strike to the middle, and that way I don't get a lot of eggshell into my egg. So I'm just gonna come down here, just like that. Got that egg in there. You're a pro at this. It worked perfect. Maybe I can go two for two, what do you think? Oh yeah. All right, so I went two for two, got lucky. I guess I've been practicing Mr. Jackie's technique a couple of times at home. All right, so I'm ready to go there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and whisk this up. And because this is raw egg, before I start handling all my other ingredients and all my other stuff, I'm gonna rinse my hands up and take this whisk out because I won't need it anymore. So I've got my good dredge here. I think we're getting close. I'm able to move it now. So what do you All think? Right, so you if you're ready to move it, I think you're ready to flip. All right, so I'm gonna start with this piece right here first. And this time I'm gonna try to get the, the, the meteor part of the fish right to the center of the pan. You think that color looks pretty oh, good there? Oh man, that looks awesome. It smells amazing. All right. I'm sure we're gonna have some happy people in the office that we can share these tacos with. Oh yeah, I've got, I've got a feeling some people in this office really like uh, tacos, so we're gonna give them a treat. Sounds good, sounds good. All right, so I've got my egg, I'm ready here. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move this out of my way. All right, and what I'm gonna do next, is I'm gonna grab um, my flour. So I'm gonna go flour, dredge, panko. All right, so I'm gonna get those two plates ready. And again, I'm gonna use disposable plates here just to make uh, my cleanup a little bit easier. And this can be quite a messy process. Uh, so this will help me make it a little bit easier. And this particular dredge, you can work on a lot of different things that you'd be needing to dredge too, right? So the same, the yeah. same process. So if you were wanting to do, let's say, some um, some fresh okra, um, some some breaded okra, you could use the same process. And if let's say you don't have the breadcrumbs, you don't have panko breadcrumbs, you can always go from flour dredge and then go back to another flour. So if you want it to be a little bit different um, texture. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put, make sure I have enough flour. And this is probably about a half a cup of flour, maybe a little bit more. And if I need some more, I can always come back and grab it. And uh -huh. then, I wanna go ahead and check the temperature. I, I wanna make sure I don't get it overcooked. And so I'm gonna go right in here. And when he's doing his, his temperature, he's putting it uh, into the thickest part of the meat. And he's making sure that he gets it completely in there. 145, and we're right there. Right so I'm gonna take it off. So you can go ahead and take it off. All right, so I'm gonna put me another little bath over here of my uh, panko breadcrumbs. And these actually have a little bit of seasoning on them, which is great. Um, but if yours don't have seasoning, um, you can always add the seasoning. So a lot of times it'll be garlic or some herbs or some different spices, and you can add those yourself. All right. Check this one. Yep. A little uh, trick that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a little bit of sole seasoning. Um, you can use this, or you could use a little bit of um, 
of like Old Bay style seasoning or any kind of other fish seasoning. And I'm gonna put that into my flour just to give me a little bit of extra flavor. And then I'm actually gonna put a little bit on my fish too before I start. Cause I always wanna make sure I season my food really well. Cause that's gonna give it all the flavor, especially with a, a fish like tilapia. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I've got this set up and got it ready. And now I'm gonna get my fish ready. So when I get my fish ready, what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna go right back to my same technique of one dirty hand, one clean. And I'm gonna, for these, since we're going to, uh, we're gonna uh, have these on tacos, I'm gonna go ahead and cut them up and have them ready for, um, for almost like fish nuggets. And so I'm gonna have them ready to go. Um, and so if you were gonna cook this and you were just gonna eat fish um, and it was gonna be on the plate as a pretty presentation, mm -hmm. you wouldn't wanna cut it up. You'd want that whole piece because it lets people see a really nice presentation. But for this, because it's gonna be in the taco, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it up. And what I'm trying to do is trying to get relatively even sizes. And so I'm gonna have, I'm gonna start by cutting it in half. All right, so I've got it in half. And now I'm gonna come down and I'm just gonna try to cut maybe like inch to uh, inch and a half pieces. I think the way you're doing this too, you would have that, that, that beautiful crunch uh, all around those little nuggets and should give a lot more flavor into those uh, tacos. Exactly, so um, I always think, um, when I, when I prepare food and when I eat, um, I always think of texture first because that's something that's really important to me. So um, when you're doing something like this, the more crisp and the more contrast of textures you can get, the better. All right, so I think I got these ready. I'm about ready to, to get them dredged and, and ready for the pan. What do you think? Sounds good. Now, uh, since we're gonna be frying in a little bit more oil, do I need to actually get ready and start preparing my, my uh my oil with a little bit more oil, uh, or my pan with a little bit more oil in it, sort of getting that oil hot before it goes in. Exactly, I think that's a great idea because um, this pan, you wanna make sure that oil is nice and hot. You don't want cold oil in, in, uh, in this particular uh, case. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, so I, you want me to, I need to cover the entire bottom of the pan, right? Yep, so, so we, we want a deep light fry, covering. a deep pan fry? Yeah, so, so this one, um, if you were gonna deep fry this, or if you go to like any restaurant, let's say you get your, um, your nuggets from a restaurant, um, what they'll be doing is they'll be using a complete deep fryer, and that's probably plenty enough there. That'll work okay. for what we're gonna do. But uh, but they would have it completely submerged, so they would have a, a, a fry this deep. But what we're doing is kind of like a light pan fry. So this is gonna have, um, you can get it about this far, and it'll be just enough to coat it on each side, because these are really thin pieces too. So if you have thicker pieces, you might change a little bit there. Gotcha. All right, so now I'm ready here. What I'm gonna do is we're just gonna mix this seasoning in a little bit. All right. And now I'm gonna go through, and, and the process, you can throw a couple on here, you don't need too many. Get them ready. And I'm just gonna uh, get them completely coated. And I always say don't try to do too many at one time, because you don't want to, uh, to overcommit yourself and not be, uh, not be able to handle them, because you don't want it sitting in any of these things too long. So um, you don't want it to be in for a long period of time. Another technique to put like this on is a lot of times people will put it in a bag and shake mm -hmm. it up. So um, now that I've got me about four pieces, which would probably be about perfect for that pan, let's go ahead and maybe I can get one more piece in there and then I can uh, we can do two rounds. Sounds perfect. You know, we actually sort of do that at the house when we're doing different things, trying to figure out how many batches we're gonna need to run so we know how to, to, to time out everything else to make sure it's done at the right time. Exactly, and you'll see I'm doing this with bare hands because I feel like it gives me um, a little bit more of an advantage of handling it, um, and I know I'm gonna wash my hands right after, mm -hmm. but, um, but when you're getting ready to put it into the pan, it's gonna be very hot, so um, I'd recommend if you had another, uh, another utensil to grab them and put them into the pan. Um, but that's totally up to you. Um, and I would just uh, check with my caregiver to make sure they will have, have those extra utensils. Because remember, the ones you put it in with, you don't want to be taking it out with. True. All right, so now I'm just gonna put these in here and I'm gonna put maybe one or two at a time. And what I'm doing is I'm just gonna let it get a nice light coat all over that flour. And then I'm gonna go ahead and transition it over into my breadcrumbs. So it doesn't have to sit in here super long. And let's say that we didn't have um, we didn't have these, uh, have a have any eggs, Mr. Jackie. What do you think something else I might could use as my dredge? You know, uh, one, one of the things that we've used before is Butterbill. Yeah, that, that seems to be a good dredge. It's got that extra fat in it, I guess, that helps sort of make um, it stick, if you will. Exactly, and that's another, that's another really good one. And one that we've done before, too, um, in 4-H is we've used hot sauce. So if you use some, yes. there's some different hot sauces that you can use that dredge really well, too. Um, so you have to play around with it, see how it's gonna work. 
Um, so now, as you can see, when I get finished, this is what they look like. So this is ready to go in the pan. But like I said, I wanna try to get them all in the pan at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my other three um, ready and then uh, we'll put those in the pan. Sounds great. Now these nuggets, uh, how long do you think uh, they're gonna to take to cook? I think the, the whole fish patties took roughly about four minutes to cook. Yeah, so these will take um, probably around the same amount of time and it's a similar process. So we're just gonna to try to flip one time we want one flip and that's it. And so um, so we'll probably, with them being cut up, it might not even be that long, we'll see. But maybe two minutes aside. Uh, you know, we've talked about a substitute for the, the egg wash. Um, what's another breadcrumb we can use? I know they make all kinds of different breadcrumbs you can get at the store. Yep, so you can actually, you can make your own homemade breadcrumbs from bread, mm -hmm. or you can actually use, um, one of my favorite ones to use is cornflakes. So you can oh. use like Kellogg's cornflakes and they'll, uh, there's, that's a great thing that you can um, add on there to, uh, to give you that nice uh, crunch. You know, we've actually had some kids one time, they took Doritos, crushed them up, uh, and actually used those. So potato chips, things like that, great corn chips. Exactly, those are awesome. And those are gonna have a little bit extra uh, different flavor with them too, mm -hmm. so that's cool. All right, so um, I think I've got some ready. You ready for me to put them in for you? Absolutely. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these put in. Definitely can feel the heat on there, so I think we got our oil at the right temperature. And any time, if you need to check it before, you can always drop a little something in there and see if it's starting to sizzle, which I see a good sizzle. Um, and also with, um, when I'm doing this, I don't want them too close to each other. I don't want them um, crowding each other. I want them to have nice uh, area around there to work. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these in there. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Look at there. Yeah, Mr. Jack has done a great job of putting, um, getting this oil ready for me, because it's perfect. And definitely you're not over crowd the pan. That, a lot of times when people are, are, are frying something, I think that's the biggest mistake that they make. They try to put too much in the pan and yeah. that brings the temperature that oil down and you lose that crispy, crunchy uh, texture that you're trying to get. Exactly, because we want it fried and crispy. We don't want it soggy. Exactly. We want everybody to be talking about how amazing those fish tacos are. Exactly. And I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of them ready for you. Um, so when these come out, they'll be ready to go. That's perfect. Well. Greg, I do have one question for you. Do you know, know why they say uh, we're going fishing? No, I don't. Well, some people don't know why we call fishing fishing. If you caught something every time you went fishing, it'd be called catching. But <laughs> so you can go fishing and not catch something every time. So that's why it's called fishing. There you go. Uh, we got a workshop coming up uh, before long. We'll be doing our virtual 4-H uh, sport fishing program. So hopefully you can help me out with that one as well. Oh, I'm, I'm there for fishing any day. All right. Looking good there. I'm right. telling you, these smells and flavors are so good. Um, just you know, there's just something about that 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 that, that smell when it's cooking. I've got it on its highest temperature, by the way. But right. One of the things I've learned about, especially using uh, the the hot plates, sometimes you have to have it at a higher temperature if you're wanting to get oil very hot. Uh, it's also harder to boil water in these versus the stove top. So sometimes you have to to, to play with that setting. Yeah. Um, if you're using another type of system, uh, you'd be able to uh, probably control the heat uh, really good. So, All right, you think those are about ready to turn? I think we're getting close. I can see some nice brownness here. I'm going to use my tongs just to make an easy flip and so I'm less likely. And I'm going to turn it away from me. So if there is a splash, it's going to go away from me. Oh man, those look perfect. Look you there. Yeah, I know we got a, we got at least one person in this office that's going to be ready to eat these up for lunchtime. It's about the perfect time. It's making me hungry right now just thinking about it. <laughs> so when these come off, I'm going to put them on the plate with our other fish right there. So that way we'll be able to break them up and, and as you're making the tacos, you'll have everything right there to make them from. Does that, that sound okay? That's great. What's some other types of fishes we might could use for this? Mr. Well, um, one of my favorite fish is whiting. Um, it, it, it's a it's a, it's a, it's a ocean fish, so salt water. Uh, I just love that flavor, and so uh, I, I can pick that up at my local grocery store um, there. But there's all kinds of different things. Catfish. When I was growing up, we'd go fishing for catfish, and my brother Terry he would clean those catfish if the turtles didn't get to them first. But that's another story. <laughs> um, and we would eat catfish and you could get some beautiful fillets off of that. In fact, I think uh, the farm that is in Cumberland County does both tilapia and catfish. Awesome. Yeah, catfish is another really good fish um, for something like this. You can eat it many different ways, broiled, fried. Um, if you want a really good fish that goes great with black and you can try a mai mai, it might be one that you've never tried before. It's a really good fish, it's more of a steak style fish. And so that particular fish is great for, uh, for blackening. 
Yes, I mean, it comes out in a thick cut. That's one of my, actual my favorite when I go to a restaurant. Yep. I, I like it mesquite grilled. There you go, that's a great, <laughs> great way to do it. All just right. take the temperature on these, they're not quite there yet. All right. Uh, another thing we could do too, if, if you know, I noticed that some of these fish, on one side there is a thicker cut, and on the other side there is a thinner cut. So one thing uh, that you could do to help them cook at the same time, and I think that I've noticed that you've done this, is we, you could uh, cook up all the pieces from the, the, the thicker side together so that they should get done about the same time versus and doing the smaller pieces together. Exactly. Okay, I'm going to check that check temperature again. One more time. I'm going to check this one, and then I'm going to, I've been checking it. Yep, done. That one hit it. And now that I've got all of my, um, I've dredged all of mine and I'm ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and clean this area up and get it ready um, for a presentation later. I got one that needs to go just a little bit longer. I'm going to flip it over just that side just a little bit. We're almost ready for that second batch. So, um, when you go fishing, you know, thinking about fish, you know, I like to think about going fishing. What's, what's, um, what's your favorite uh, place to fish? Do you have a, fa a, a favorite fishing hole? Yeah, it's funny you should ask. So, I grew up and we always fished in the PD River. So this is um, near Anson County. And so um, I remember fishing in the river and up on the uh, Blewett Falls Lake. Um, and did a lot of fishing there, but the best place that I ever um, uh, fished is a little local honey hole, and it's a little uh, known pond that's a private pond, and so I was able to get access to that and fish there, and it was, you could always catch fish, because there's nothing better than actually going fishing and catching something. That's right. I, I love fishing, but I, I prefer catching. I love catching. <laughs> uh, well, I tell you what, let's go ahead and get these in the oil, and then I'll tell you about my favorite fishing spot. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these in. Oh yeah, still got our sizzle. And you'll see some of these pieces, Mr. Jackie, are a little thinner, so they might cook a little faster. Gotcha, I'm gonna keep a good close eye on those. All right, so I'm gonna tell you about my favorite fishing po uh, or, uh, spot. It's, it's actually in Tennessee. My uh, uh, father-in-law lives on Boone Lake in Tennessee, and it's one of the best fishing holes I've ever had. Um, I go out there, they, I've even got, um, they got uh, rod holders for me that they've attached to the dock because the catfish are so big, if, uh, if, if, I, if I set my pole down, they're gonna jerk it into the water when they hit. So I have to have a rod holder just like if you're on a boat to hold my rod so if I step away for just a second, I don't lose my rod. Oh, you know that's good ones. Oh yeah, and every now and then I'll catch a big old carp too. So they're, they're, they're not good to eat, but boy, they're sure fun to find. <laughs> All right, so uh, while he's getting those ready, I, th I think I'll go ahead and, um, and get us a plate set up and so that we are, um, you, you can see what the finished product is gonna look like. All right, so I'm gonna move some of my stuff out of the way and make sure I've got space. Um, and what I've got here is I've got a couple of um, tortilla shells and these are flour based, but you can use flour or corn. Um, and uh, you can even make these um, from scratch at home if you want mm -hmm. to. Um, these, these we bought um, store bought, but you know, feel free if you wanna try, try these in the future, that's a, a cool recipe that you can um, try uh, to make them on your own. So mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do is, um, I think these, you can, you can eat them cold, but I think if you just warm up just a slight bit, um, it helps to, uh, to, to match with your flavors, all right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw them in the microwave for maybe just five to 10 seconds, um, just long enough to, uh, to, to heat them up and just get a little bit of um, heat to them. Yeah, I think that's a great process too. I think it helps them to fold and they're less likely to uh, 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 tear apart when you go to fold them for the taco. So I heat them up just a little bit. I'm, I'm going right. to go ahead so and turn these small ones seconds. here. They look like they're, they're cooking really quick on that side, so I'm going to go ahead and turn these little thin ones. All right, that should be enough. Oh yeah, they're about perfect. All right, so now that I've got them here, let's make some tacos. All right, so anytime that we're making um, anything on a plate, we've talked about our presentation. We want it to look pretty. Um, I could make these tacos and when I get ready to eat them, I might likely will wrap them all the way up. But for this uh, purposes, I want to have a really pretty presentation. So I'm going to do a kind of a side open face. All right. So I could do a full open face taco if I was just going to have one. Um, but I'm going to do kind of a side open face. And so this is going to really make it really pretty on the plate. 
um, and then we'll finish it off with a little trick. All right, so I've got them here, so I'm gonna start off with my slaw base. Yep. Mr. Jack has made a really pretty looking slaw, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of slaw here into each one. And remember, um, think about when you're doing this, like, are they gonna function to eat? Are you gonna be able to eat it in one bite? So I don't wanna fill them, overfill them too much to where I can't eat them. And they just fall all apart. All right, and I see that really pretty cilantro in there. It's gonna bring a lot of good flavors and, all right. So I've got my slaw in there now. And remember, this would be about a serving for one person here. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna get my uh, my fish. So I'm gonna make one of each, all right? So for, for this one, I'm gonna do two pieces of my um, breaded. And then for the other one, um, since this blackened fish has not been cut, I would just go ahead and you can tell Mr. Jackie cooked it perfect. It's just not nice and flaky here. So it just flakes apart really nice and easy. And so I can pick these pieces up and put them um, right into my taco. So I'm just gonna get me a couple pieces here, maybe two or three. Basically, your goal is sort of to fill it up to make sure there's enough meat that goes all across so you get a bite yep. of it in every bite that you take. Yep, and these size tacos, these are about, you know, three or four bite kind of tacos. And so um, these will be about perfect. And so um, so now that I've got them open there, now I'm going to come in with my sauce. And so um, depending on how your sauce is, it might be a little runny. It might be a little bit uh, thicker. Um, this one's a little bit thicker. So I'm going to show you a little trick if you want to have a really pretty consistency. I'm going to add a tad bit of water to this, and that's just going to thin it out a little bit so I can drizzle it on there, all right? So I'm going to throw a little bit of water in there. I'm just going to mix that in real quick. And that's going to thin my sauce out a little bit. And as you can see now, it's a little bit thinner. All right, and I'm just gonna come in, and I'm just gonna put a little bit all the way down. And I try, I, I, same thing um, as we did with the other, I wanna make sure I get a little bit in each bite. So my three to four bites, I'm gonna come over on the other one, make sure I get a little bit on this bite. All right, and then the way that you would serve these is I would I always think it's a really cool little idea is to serve it with a, a lemon wedge or two. So that way, if they wanna have that little bit of citrus at the end, they can add that citrus right before they get ready to eat them. So it's a nice, fresh presentation. So as you can see, that's what it looks like, and that's what we have tacos here. And it looks like we've got enough to make quite a bit of tacos, so I'm getting hungry, so I think we're gonna try to eat these. But I hope you try these at home. I hope you're cooking along with us, and we will, uh, we will uh, see you next time. That's right, thank y'all so much for tuning in. And remember, when you go fishing, it's called fishing because you don't catch something every time you go fishing. <laughs>